This video explains how to extract the empirical cumulative distribution function values from the ECDF function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this tutorial, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create some example data, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new vector object called x is appearing at the top right. And we can print the first six values of this vector using the head function, as you can see in line four. And then you can see at the bottom that we have generated a vector containing random numeric values that are following the normal distribution. Now, if we want to draw these values in a plot showing the empirical cumulative distribution function, then we can plot our data using the plot function and the ECDF function, as you can see in lines six and seven of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right that we have created an ECDF plot that shows our data. Now, let's assume that we want to extract these data points from the empirical cumulative distribution function into a data object. Then we can apply the code that you can see in the following part of this video. So first, we need to apply the ECDF function once again to our data object X. However, this time we need to store the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling fun ECDF. So after running line nine of the code, you can see that a new function object is appearing at the top right, which is called fun ECDF. If we check the class of this data object by running line 11 of the code, you can see that this is an ECDF class function. And now we can apply this function to our data object X once again. And then we have to store the output of this in another data object that I'm calling my ECDF. So after running line 13 of the code, you can see that this data object my ECDF is appearing at the top right as well. And if we print the first six values of this new data object using the head function, you can see that six values are appearing at the bottom. And now if we want to relate these values to our input values in the vector object X, we could even create a data frame using the data frame function in which we combine our input values X with the corresponding ECDF values. So after running line 16 of the code, a new data frame called data ECDF is created and we can print the first six rows of this data frame to the console by running line 17 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have created a data set with two columns. The first column contains our random values and the second column contains the corresponding ECDF values. We can also confirm this result by plotting our manually created data frame column containing the ECDF values once again in a scatter plot. As you can see in lines 19 to 21 of the code. So in this case, I'm plotting our input values X against our ECDF values. And if you now have a look at the bottom right, after running these lines of code, you can see that the values are exactly the same. Of course, the layout of the plot is a little bit different, but you can see that the points in our ECDF plot are exactly the same as in the previous plot. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.